Hello students. Uh, today, in this lecture, uh, I'm going to discuss this particular topic, start on this particular topic, that is the typical relational query optimization. We have seen a little bit of query optimization in our uh, third unit syllabus, third unit part. We have already discussed a little bit of query optimization. If you remember, there is, you know, we have discussed the concept of the access path, right? Access path means different ways of retrieving the tuples from the relation, right? That's what we have discussed earlier. Uh, most selective access paths are actually chosen, right? So that, that gives you the, uh, actually, optimization of the queries. That is, you need to select the most selective, the access path, right? So, uh, in, the typical, <coughs> in this particular lecture, we are going to, going to actually discuss some queries which are quite complex in nature. Okay, we have, see most of the queries are not very simple. They are, if you, remember, if you know that there are some nested queries which can be written, right? Nested query means a query inside a query, right? One query calls on the another query. And that query actually uh, works like an iterative part inside one query, okay? So, such query queries are called as the nested queries. Now, <coughs> Basic steps followed for optimization, optimum, the optimization of the SQL queries by the relational uh, query optimizers are like actually, when you have such queries, what you need to do, you need to decompose those into smaller units, okay? If you have a number of queries, multiple queries, that is say a nested query structure, then to optimize it, simple one we have discussed earlier, right? So in the nested queries, what you need to do, you need to segment the query into number of blocks, okay? And what is a block? Block is nothing but actually a combination of select from, that is, <coughs> and, the, uh, and the projection. That is the select join and the projection, okay? So, uh, do we basically break the collection of smaller blocks, okay? So, and after breaking up into the blocks, the, the query optimizer, they concentrate on those blocks one by one. First one block is optimized, inside that another other block is optimized. So, so we need to have the optimization of the blocks one by one, okay? So query optimizer basically does that, okay? Now, uh, blocks are, how does it do that? Basically, it goes for, the uh, converting of those blocks into its relational algebra expressions. Okay? Now, relational algebra expressions are a particular way of writing the queries in algebraic form. I think you have studied that in DBMS class. Right? It is a representation, a type of representation of the queries in the algebraic form. Okay? So, uh, what is the central task of the optimizer in this case? Optimizer basically finds out after each relational algebra expression it takes, okay, that is what, what has been converted from the blocks to relational algebra expression, and optimizer finds out a good plan to execute that particular expression, okay? Evaluating the expression. That is, which plan will give you the best minimum cost? By minimum cost means the number of I.O. operations. That is, the number of pages which are retrieved from the back, uh, the disk gives the, the uh, number of I.O. operations, okay? And the number of, minimum number of I.O. operation means the, uh, it is one, is optimum cost. That is, it is the minimum cost, sorry. That is, minimization of cost is the, Cost of retrieval of the tuples from the disk is the prime objective of this particular task, that is query optimization, okay? So, uh, obviously that I.O. IO devices, this, this like I.O. devices, they are slower, right? So, the main prime objective here is actually to have a faster execution of the queries. And remember, these are the topics that we are handling from, for large distributed databases, not simple, uh, a, a database of some hundred tuples, okay? Where you have millions of data tuples in the databases, 
like in the banking sector databases or in the uh, <coughs> your uh, online shopping sector but databases the insurance organizations databases okay so those databases which has a large number of customers who in, who actually uh, put uh, puts keep, uh, which actually keeps on submitting the um, simultaneous queries okay by number of customers at the time to the database okay in such cases we write we actually the database needs to optimize okay because the the database has to fit, uh, has to work in such a way that the execution is very, very fast. Okay, which there should not be time lag in the execution, and hence the cost should be minimized. So here, going back to this topic, that is the uh, optimization of block at a time, as we are telling, that is enumerating the alternative plan for evaluating the aspiration. So once you have the plans fixed, so enumeration of those plans, which plan is best one, has to be done by the optimizer. Okay, so the estimating the cost of each enumeration plan and choosing the plus plan with the least estimated cost. That is the estimation of the cost of each of these plans, which are the multi alternative plans which are available with you. Okay, and and choose the best plan which fits this. That is the lowest estimated cost plan. Now. As I was telling you, that is when a user submits a query, any query, suppose in the ATM you go and try to check your balance. That's a query you are submitting to the database. Database will retrieve the information in terms of your request, but how will database retrieve? It will retrieve in terms of the, it will execute the query that is submitted by you. You are submitting in terms of buttons, right? You are pressing some buttons or some in the net banking or something like you are pressing just a some keystrokes and the clicking with the mouse. But inside backend, the, the, the system, the application will send the queries to the database to get the information. Now here, when the user submits an SQL query, the query is passed into a collection of query block as I was telling you, right? Query blocks. Now, and query then, and pass the query blocks to the optimizer to generate the relational algebra expression and hence to generate the plan, okay? Now, the query block, or simply a block, is the actual, is the uh, SQL query, which is nothing but actually this, uh, projection, join, and selection. That is selection, projection, and selection, join, and projection. Okay? So, this term makes the one block. There is nothing, no other thing involved here. Okay? Every block is actually, is actually, it, it only consists of these three things. That is the selection, projection, and join. Okay? So, for example, consider a schema. Say, uh, as the example that we were discussing earlier also, let us consider these three tables again. That is the sailor, boats, reserves. Okay? And considering this three table, we'll basically try to find out the best plan for execution of a particular query. So let us go for the query, one example query here. And see here, these three tables here, it contains the sailor, contains the SID, sailor, that is the, that is the uh, primary key of the sailor table, that is the sailor ID, S name, sailor name, rating, age, etc. Similarly, boat has the primary key boat ID, the boat name, color of the boat, etc. Okay? Reserve, who is reserving? So it is basically a combination of sailor ID and the boat ID together. Sailor ID and boat ID makes the joint primary key for this table, reserves. And the, on the day on which it is being reserved and who has reserved. Okay? Our name. That is the reserver's name. So these are the three tables that we will be considering in a query. Now the query goes like this. It is a little bit a complex query. It is an instead query. As you can see, there are two queries. One query, this, this query executes inside this query. So this is a nested query. Okay? So, select sailor ID. So it's talking about projecting a particular uh, column, which is indicated by the sailor ID. And the 
minimum reserve date, that is the earliest reserve date. Okay? From the two, three tables, sailor, reserves, and the boat, where sailor ID is equal to the reserve ID. So it is basically joining here, these two tables, sailor and the reserves. Okay? And our boat ID, that is from the reserve field. See, these are this sailor is indicated by S, reserved by R, both by B. So R B I D, that is from the reserve table, both ID is equal to both both ID. So this is the joining of the reserve and the both table. Okay, by both relation. And the reserve color is equal to red. So color has to be red. Okay. And the sailor rating is the maximum sailor rating from the sailor table. So this table basically selects the maximum sailor rating from the sailor table, grouped by the sailor ID and count this greater than 1. Okay. So here what it is doing, it is basically selecting a sailors with the highest sailor rating and from there the at least two reservations uh, that is each sailor with the highest rating and which has at least two reservations. See, this count greater than, greater than one means the, it is, has to be at least more than one reservation has to be there, right? That is the count has to be greater than uh, one, okay? Greater than one means it is obviously going to reserve more than one. That is what the description, that is the at least two reservation for red boats. See, what it is selecting, this indicates the color, this is the primary condition here. This is required, right? As rating is, has to be highest, these two are the, these are the two join conditions. So what is the primary <coughs> selection condition, selection operation? That the boat has to be a red boat and the rating has to be maximum. Okay? So this count basically refers to this, these two conditions and conditions here. Okay? That is the count, that is the person having highest rating and more than the that is the as and having a having the red boats so highest rating will be one which is highest among these sailors right the red boat is the another one which will be given by the count okay so that is the how many uh, red boats are there actually uh, reserved for that highest rating if a particular highest rating sailor has only one reserve it will not be considered in this particular query okay this query will retrieve only that highest rating sailor who has more than one red boat, red boat reservation, more than one, that is at least two red boat reservation. Okay? Only those, only that particular <coughs> information will be fixed. Okay? So from that, the, it will be projecting the sailor ID, that particular column value, sailor ID, and the earliest date on which the, the person has a reservation. Okay? So the query seems to be a little bit complex, actually not that very complex query here, this one. That is, it identifies the sailor with maximum rating among the sailors in the sailor table. Okay? And then it identifies the highest rated sailors which has more than one red boat. Okay? That is the color is red. Okay? And from there it identifies um, that is a more than one <coughs> red boat. So that will be at least two reservations for the red boat will be identified. Okay. And then that will be projected. That is the, uh, the sailor ID and the earliest date on which the sailor had the, had the reservation. So that will be displayed. Okay. So intentionally a complex query is taken here to show the optimization, the way optimizers works. Okay. Now this particular query will be broken up into two, two blocks definitely because there are two blocks. Can you identify which are the two blocks? Two blocks here are the, the block which select from and where, where. These are, this is one block, okay, including the group by and having, okay. And here this select from because where is not there in this particular query. So this forms another block. Okay.
So we have the two query blocks, as you can see here. This is the inner query, nested block. That is the select maximum rating from seller. So select and from from one block. And here it is select from and where. These are considered to be the part of this. So select from and where forms the outer block. So we have two blocks. Okay, to execute this query, just observe it properly. How this is broken up into two blocks. Okay, we have one inner block, one outer block. Outer block is this select from where I told you select. We can actually write in sequence. Select uh, okay, we have written it here, and this is the projection. Select this projection from is join and where is the selection, right? So we have the select project and join. So it is uh, you can see this uh, properly, and now let's go to the next part of converting these blocks into relational algebra expressions. Okay, so every query block has to be converted into extended algebra expressions. Okay, select block, as we know that select clause means select clause means the select keyword. Okay, we are referring here, not to the selection operator. Selection operations are they are in the where clause. Right? Selection operations are the operations which are included in the where clause. So select clause refers to the the projection, right? Those are so corresponds to the projection operator. Where clause, if you have multiple relations name established there, means the joining operation, you are joining the uh, relation. If you have only single uh, relation, then obviously there is no question of joining. So where is the from clause basically? <coughs> from from is basically uh, um, the from is basically the joining, right? From means when from one table means there is no question of joining. From multiple table means there are some you need to have the joining based on the condition that you refer to in the where clause. Where clause is where you pro you provide the selection operations, which basically selects based on some some those operations it selects the tuples. Right, where you basically go for the selection paths. That is the most selective path that you try to choose, and of course you use the indexes appropriately. Right, this is in the where clause only. So where clause corresponds to the selection operations, and the joining condition is also actually uh, is specified in the where clause only. Okay, but those join is basically specified by the from clause in the query. Now. The SQL query, that uh, relational algebra expression for the outer block. For the outer block, what you need? This is the projection. Projection, what you want to project? Sailor ID and the minimum RD. Minimum RD means the earliest reservation date. Okay? Having count, we are bringing it up because these are part of the projections. Having count is greater than one, that is at least two red boat reservations, okay, that is count should be greater than one and grouped by SID and those sailor ID, it has to be grouped by the sailor IDs, that is, it is segmented or you can say fragment, uh, segmented, the tuples are segmented in terms of the sailor IDs. Now, based on the condition in the where clause, the selection operations are specified this way on which the joining has to be done of the of the sailor id sid and the reservation sid that is the reservation sid and the sailor sid are the condition on which the sailor table and the reservation tables are joined and both id is the another attribute on which the reservation and the both table relations are joined and the color is red and the S rating, the rating of that particular sailor is, we are specifying to another block, so we are not writing here the block, the value from the nested block based on 
the cross product of the sale or reservation and both. See, when we are joining, we are basically first we are making a we are creating a cross product of the tuples of the uh, tables which are to be joined. After that, we are applying the joining condition to find those tuples which matches the joining condition and register the limits. Okay, so the joining conditions are specified here. So here we specify in the this is actually part of the from clause where we specify the cross product. Okay, this is how the relational algebra expression is written. So that is what has been described here. That is the relational algebra expression in the form clause. That is where we are actually actually applied the cross product. Okay. Then the qualifying tuples are grouped by SID and having clause conditions. Okay. And used to discuss some groups. Then each alternating each remaining group, the results of the tuple containing the attribute mentioned in the projection list are displayed. Okay. So that is how the sequence on which the this has to be executed. So now when we have such relational algebra expressions created, now we can have alternative plans for evaluating those expressions. Okay. So what these alternative plans which which we generate from the relational algebra expressions will be basically uh, examined by relational query optimizer okay and uh, and can be understood by the, by actually recognizing the query essentially as a combination of those three that is the selection projection and the cross product that is the join algebra expression with the remaining operations that means like you know those remaining operations like aggregate operations group by operations okay are carried out on the results of this expression Okay, so any aggregate operations like maximize, finding the maximum value, minimum value, okay, average, okay, or count, okay, and group by, this can be actually executed on the result that we obtain by the three basic operations, that is the selection, projection, and the join. Okay, so this query, uh, the outer query, is written this way. That is the uh, with the select. Uh, this one is the select operation. That is the project operation on the selection conditions given the cross products. And we are just writing as the value from the nested block, just to represent that it is the it is referring to the results of another block. Okay. Now, once those results are obtained. We make sure that the group by and having operations and on the and the attributes mentioned in these clauses are added to the projection list. Okay, so once those selection, projection, and the um, join operations are carried out on the block, we ensure that the group by and the having clause having operation is carried out on those. Okay, so there will be some elimination of the groups, and obviously from each group the having Condition will specify which uh, tuples needs to be retrieved, okay? And then on that particular result, the projected operation is being displayed, okay? Projection list added to the projection list. In the projection list are replaced by the names of the attribute. To which they refer. Okay, so uh, aggregate operations are basically in the in the uh, projection list are actually referred by the names of the attributes to which that aggregate operation refers to. Okay, thus optimization of these three parts, the selection, projection, and the cross, the join part of the query essentially ignores the aggregate operation. So when we define it in terms of the blocks, the three combinations of the blocks, selection, projection, and the join. Essentially ignores the aggregate operations to evaluate the queries. Okay, so uh, to optimize the queries. So that is what how the optimization of the queries are done. You don't have to be bothered much about the aggregate operations. 
to get the, the actually the optimizer is not much bothered about the aggregate operations uh, in the query. It is mainly bothered about the selection, product, projection, and the join. And accordingly, the plan is evaluated. Why it is it mainly bothered about the selection, projection, and the join? Because this uh, involves the I operations. That is the actual tuples which are retrieved. Aggregates are actually based on, computed based on only running information. So once the query retrieved, the aggregates are done on it. So for optimization, it's mainly to find out the cost, the, the lowest minimum cost for optimizing the query. It's mainly bothered about the blocks. That is the selection position as join operations. Okay. So estimating the cost of a plan. Now you have from the relational algebra expression, you have to identify the base plan that switch, right? So those different plans are so, uh, uh, the parameter for choosing a base plan is basically the cost of the plan. Okay. So to find uh, to to I uh, to have to compare the cost of the plan for the different plans that are in your hand for executing a query, the optimizer has to go for the estimation of the cost of the plan, then only it can compare, right? So the estimation of the cost of the plan has are two parts, okay? That is the, uh, for each query block, to have the estimated cost of the plan, they are actually a combination of two parts. Now what are those two parts? That is, for each node in the tree, the cost of performing the corresponding operation is estimated. Operations means the relational operations which are described in the where clause, okay? So the cost of performing the corresponding operation is estimated, okay? Uh, now we know that while uh, performing those operations, whether it is join, okay, or uh, any other operations, join, selection, or the projection, uh, basically uh, there are two approaches. One where you where it is a, we, we have already discussed in the earlier class where a query tree is constructed. You go for first joining, right? And then for, you know, selection, based on the selection condition, the where clause, and then the projection. So the result of this, uh, the join in the downmost, that is the list node of the query tree, goes as input to the, uh, the join, of join operation, right? And then out of join operation, it goes to the, as input to the position operations. So those are actually, those operations are indicated as the nodes there. Now here, uh, when this performing the corresponding operation, this uh, when the cost of performing the corresponding operations depends on the type approach that you follow. We have we have already discussed there are, there are two different approaches which may be used. One where a temporary table is created to as a result of the output of the the operations. Like you know, in case of the the join operations a temporary table of the joining operations will be done, which will be fed to the selection operations, right, as the input to the selection operations. So those can be done either using a temporary table or they can be done on the fly using the method that we already discussed in the previous class, which is called as a pipeline, right? Pipelining is, we, we have already discussed that pipelining is better than the uh, the tradition of the um, uh, normal another method where non non pipeline method that is the temporary table approach because pipelining yeah, has less overhead it is not going to create the temporary table so it has less overhead right it is done on the fly so uh, after that another part is that is that for each node of the tree the size of the results okay the first part is the cost of performing the operations right the corresponding operations is estimated. Now, the result size also matters. Cost of the performing that operation is the, the way that operations, whether you are using pipelining or temporary table approach, okay, that is the, the cost of the corresponding operations. Now, the another part is, what is the result size it is retrieving from those operations, okay? Because whether it is retrieving 100 to pull or it is retrieving 1,000 to pull, or it is retrieving one lakh to pull, okay? Because why this result matters? Because the size of the results goes as input to the another node, another operation. One operation performs a particular operation on the, on the relations, retrieves the result size depending on the conditions, and gives this 
uh, you can see selected tuples as the input to another table, another uh, operation. Okay, so another operation gets the output of one um, output of another operation, one operation, one node gets the output of another operation as the input, right? So the result size matters for estimating the cost. Okay, and not only the size, but the cost of the operation, that is the earlier part, and also the sort order of the parents, whether the sort order, uh, sort order of the tuples, whether the the way it is sorted in the tuples, because sorting operation will also have some cost. Okay, so basically it is uh, there are two parts. One is the cost of performing the operation, and another is the result size. Okay, so estimating the for estimating the result size, consider the query block, a simple a general query block we are talking about. The select from and where. Okay, select the attribute list from the relation list. And the where where is the selection terms operations? This term one and term two is the uh, conjunctive normal form terms in the where clause. Okay, the is the term which combines the conjunctive terms. Now here the maximum number of two tuples in the result of this query without duplicate elimination is the product of cardinalities of the relation in the from clause. So we know in the form clause is nothing but it's a cross product of the relations. Okay. So result of product of cardinalities, that is the number of tuples. Suppose there are one the particular um, the relation has some hundred tuples, another relation has some another say thousand tuples. So the cross product will give you one lakh tuple. Okay. So it will be a cross product of those hundred tuples into thousand tuples. So that is the cross, that is the multiplication of the the product of the cardinalities. Okay. So after that, every term in the where clause, however, eliminates some of these potential result tuples. So from in the where clause, you have the joining condition and other conditions specified, right? So every term, every term, whether it's term one or term two, every term will give you some elimination of some tuples from that particular cross product, from those one lakh tuples. Okay? So it is every term will have some elimination of some of these potential result tuples, okay? And that uh, the result size associated with each of the term is called as the reduction factor, okay? For each term, whatever reduction it is achieving is called as the reduction factor. Now, what is a reduction factor? It is nothing but the ratio of expected result size to the input size considering only the selection represented by the term. So, uh, only results of the actual results that is the the actually the the selection which is input size considering only the selection represented by the term whatever the results to result and tuple it gets by considering its condition there divided by the result of the uh, the expected result size okay. So that is the uh, re expected result size of the term divided by the actual number of input size. That is the, uh, is the, uh, the you can say whatever input is available without reducing and whatever is reduced, if you find the ratio of that, you get the reduction factor. So reduction factor determines how much the particular Term is going to reduce the tuples, number of tuples. Okay, so uh, so actual size of the result is estimated as the maximum size times the product of the reduction factor to the term in the where clause. Okay, so when giving the given that particular uh, the maximum size times the product of the reduction factor, maximum size whatever the maximum size that is one lakh suppose into that reduction factor gives you how much reduction you are going to get. Okay, so that is how it is the <coughs> uh, it is calculated the size of the resultant size. Okay, so it is the 
uh, the actual size of the result can be estimated as the maximum size times the product of the reduction factor. Okay, reduction first you need to find out the reduction factors for the term in the square clause and then multiply it to the maximum size of the uh, tuples in the relation and get, that gives you the reduction of the the reduction that you receive for that particular um, term, okay? So that is the actual size of the result. So result size can be estimated. So you have the basic options for that, um, for the corresponding operation path, that is the operation path, whether you are using the pipelining and the result size, both these give you the estimate of the cost of the plant. Okay, so by adding this, by considering both these factors together, you can find the, the estimated cost of the plan. Okay, so thank you.